I almost did my hair, but not quite. <laughs> hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you what is in my bathroom. This video was requested by Miss Alana Davison. We were talking about different video ideas and she was like, I just wanna know like, what's in your bathroom, man? And I was like, that sounds perfect for me as there is a very low level of commitment involved. In honor of Alana, I am going to be filming this video as more of a vlog style, super chill video. If you guys haven't checked out our channel, definitely do. I will link it in the description box below. There will also be links to everything that I mentioned today. All right, let's do this. Okay, so. I have my skincare right here. Uh, I have a whole video up that I just did about my like updated skincare routine, but there was a couple little guys that I didn't mention in there that I wanted to. So the first thing that I forgot to mention was my Bite Agave Lip Mask. I have a brand spanking new on here. And uh, I just put this on at nighttime. I feel like it's like very, very thick. And so when I put it on at night, I kind of get up in the morning and my lips almost like peel off and it's super hydrated and baby soft underneath. So that's what I use at nighttime, it's my little bite lip mask. And then I wanted to talk about this guy too. This is the Drunk Elephant TLC Baby Facial. So it is 25% AHA, 2% BHA, and it is just basically a uh, facial. You put it on for like 20 minutes at night. I didn't mention this in my skincare video because I like to try skincare for at least kind of like a month before I talk about it. Um, and I just wanted to give this guy another week just to make sure that the results I was seeing was actually coming from this. Anyways. I am obsessed with this. Like of all the drunk elephant stuff I've tried, this just blew this guy out of the water. I mean, no, I still love you. But this. <laughs> this has been incredible. So I've been using this like three times a week um, and I'll just kind of like skip days in between so that I'm not over exfoliating. Um, but it's been absolutely incredible. At nighttime, I cleanse my skin and then I leave it on for 20 minutes. And then I do the rest of my skincare after like any kind of like hydrating ingredients that I want to put on after this. Um, and it is just so bomb. Like it has made my skin so much softer. It's evened everything out. It's just like plumped it up. Like it's honestly, it's unreal. I'm sorry, Canada. I don't think that they sell these in Canada yet and I don't think you can get it shipped to you either. I know it's for sure available in the States, but this shit is, good lord, so good. So this stuff over here is kind of like my daily use skincare, so to speak, and then down here, I have any kind of like extra little stuff that I don't use all the time or I can't bring myself to throw out. So back here, I have like a billion different little face masks and stuff like that, um, and I just keep all of those uh, whenever I wanna do a sheet mask. Then I have things like Tatcha skincare, which, doesn't make a huge difference in my skin, but it's just so beautiful that I want to keep it here so I can look at it. Sometimes I have stuff that I bought that didn't make a huge difference in my skin, but I'm holding on to because it's so expensive that maybe I'll use it once something runs out. So I have like a couple drunk elephant products that I purchased that I wasn't like super blown away by. Then I have my little baby perfume selection. So I only recently started getting into perfumes. I was never really like a huge perfume wearer. I think because my mom wasn't, so I was just never super into it. But I went and I did a Sephora masterclass and I was given um, this perfume by a lady that worked at Sephora and was kind of helping set up the whole masterclass and it is unreal. I know it looks like I've used none of this. <laughs> So I just brought this perfume to New York uh, when I went with my mom just recently because I wear this perfume like every single day of my life even if I'm doing absolutely nothing and I look like garbage, I still wear it. And I had brought it to New York and I accidentally shattered the entire bottle all over the uh, hotel room floor. So, so that kind of sucked. I had to pick up a new one uh, and our hotel was very fragranced. So anyways, this is the Atelier Cologne. Uh, it is the Clementine California one. It just smells like oranges and it's super fresh and really clean smelling and I just love it so much. Then I have my MAC Turquatic. This is a throwback. So when you work at MAC, they tell you that you're only allowed to wear MAC perfumes. So I bought this because of that. And much like that other perfume, I, uh, on my first shift at MAC, I was mopping the floors at the end of the day for closing and my mop handle hit one of the displayers of this perfume and it shattered all over the floor. So that was awesome. And then this is the Aqua de Gio, Aqua de Gia. I don't know, by Giorgio Armani. Uh, this one is again, very, very fresh, clean, kind of like watery smelling. It's so nice. I love it so much, obviously. Then because I'm a fancy bitch, I have the Tom Ford, to, 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 why can I not say that word? Tobacco 
vanille. This smells like I am a very high class hooker who specializes in woodsman. It's just very like sexy. It's like a darker scent if that makes sense. Um, it's more like kind of musty and oh, it's just so nice. It's beautiful. And then I have the replica by the fireplace one. Um, this one literally smells like marshmallows and wood. Like it is the sweetest, most delicious scent ever and it's so nice during Christmas, but I got it towards the end of Christmas so I didn't get to use much of it. And then I have my two kind of like girly fragrances, which is the YSL Black Opium. Uh, this isn't my favorite for every day just because I'm not super drawn to really sweet scents, but I uh, do like it when I feel like being fancy and girly. It's also Matt's favorite. And then I have the little YSL uh, Mont Paris, which is also very girly and sweet and uh, eh, I don't think it smells that good on me, but I keep it anyways because again, it's another one of Matt's favorites and it's just girly and cute and I want to love it so much. I also have down here my little Bite uh, Agave Lip Scrub, which I don't use all the time, but I use it every once in a while when my lips are like particularly dry. I like this one because it's not just like pure sugar, like there is some other kind of ingredients in there that makes it like hydrating while it's also exfoliating. Yeah. And then I have my hair care stuff down here. So this is the Living Proof Restore Leave-In Conditioner, and it's more of like kind of a lotion-y leave-in conditioner. Um, and then I also have my Axis More Oil. So the salon that I go to is called Axis and they make this stuff and I've gone through ooh, probably like four bottles. Um, it is so fucking bomb. I've purchased a lot of other hair oils just for shits and uh, I never feel like they do my hair justice like this one does so I love this. I use this in my hair when it's wet before I blow dry it but I also will use it on dry hair as well. This one I only put in wet hair but sometimes I will actually mix these two if I feel like my hair is like particularly dry and damaged but this is sort of like my everyday hair oil and then when I feel like I need a little extra boost I will put in a little bit of that sometimes. Then back here I have a bunch of nondescript ever-changing hair products. I don't style my hair that often and if I do I usually just kind of put in my hair oils and stuff. I rarely use like my hairspray and crap like that. I have been trying these products from way away way. They've been sending me stuff and I've also picked up some stuff myself because everyone raves about this and I I don't understand it. This is garbage. Everything I've ever tried from them is garbage. Why do I keep it in here? Don't know. Also, I have my Lush No Drought Dry Shampoo. So this is a powder shampoo, obviously. Um, normally, I use the Living Proof Dry Shampoo, which is like in an aerosol can. The only thing is that um, I run through it like stupidly fast, like within the course of a couple weeks. Um, and it's so expensive that I get pissed off and I decide I'm not going to buy it anymore. And then I switch back to No Drought. And then I get over my little boycott and I buy the other dry shampoo and then I use it and then I get mad again. So I always keep my little Lush one as a standby. I love this one because it gives me such like intense volume in my hair. The only thing is that depending on what color my hair is, this does leave a little bit of a kind of white cast at the roots. Um, so now that I'm a little bit more blonde, I'll probably use this more, but when I have darker hair color, I kind of use it more as a last resort. Okay, this shit is like, I... <sighs> I will never stop using this. I will never stop recommending this. This is my favorite product on the planet. It is the Lush Sympathy for the Skin Body Lotion. Nothing, nothing, nothing in the world hydrates my skin like this does. It just soaks into the skin so nicely. It doesn't leave you feeling like greasy or anything like that. It smells great. And anytime that any of my friends are like, oh, I don't really use Lush or I don't really like Lush. I'm like, but have you tried Sympathy for the Skin? When I met the founders of Lush, I was like, what's your favorite product? And they said whatever they said. And I was like, but have you tried Sympathy for the skin like I just feel like this does not get nearly enough hype it's the best product on the planet good god sympathy for the skin and then in terms of hand lotion uh, I use the body shop hemp hand lotion I feel like it's so funny this is like such an oldie but a goodie I've been using this forever and it just is so great I have like three tubes of this I have one in my car I have one in my bag and then I have one that I keep in my house sometimes my hands get like super dry especially in the winter um, and so I just layer the shit on like no other and I thought I'd include this because everybody asks me all the time what I use to whiten my teeth and I use the crest 3d white white strips in glamorous white it removes 10 years of tough set in stains I've been told anyways I used like a whole box of these uh, and my teeth got very very white from it and then after that I just kind of will use them every once in a while when I feel like 
my teeth need a little bit more whitening or whatever I just kind of remember it and I'll usually pop them in before I go into the shower and just leave them on so yeah I've continued buying these exact same ones for the past few years because I just feel like they work the best and uh, I'll just use them every once in a while now so moving along to my shower I guess we can start with shampoos so the shampoo that I've been using recently is the caviar shampoo and conditioner and I've also been trying out this one from Brio Briogeo Briogeo this is the don't despair repair super moisture shampoo um, so here's what happened I religiously used the living proof restore shampoo and conditioner and I used it for probably three years straight um, this shit's expensive and I was like I don't care it makes such a difference in my hair and then one day I felt like it just stopped working my hair just started feeling really brittle and really dry and I was like I'm going to change out my shampoo so I did so I picked up these two to kind of see which ones I liked more and I like them both pretty equally I would say. The biggest thing that I look for is stuff for dry hair and anything that doesn't contain sulfates. Even if you don't want to buy expensive shampoos, try and look for shampoos that are free of sulfates in your drugstore or whatever. I used to use really cheap shampoo because I did not believe that expensive shampoo was worth it. And cheap shampoo is usually filled with sulfates and that was the thing that killed my hair the most, especially if you have hair that's colored or damaged or whatever. Anything that's sulfate free I think makes a huge difference. I'm obviously not a hairdresser. That's just the thing that made such a big difference for my hair. And for toning shampoo, I use the Axis Purple Rain. Again, this is from my uh, hair salon, but you can order it online as well. So when I have blonde hair, I'll use this maybe once every three or four washes, depending on how ashy I want it to be. When I had silver hair, I would use a toning shampoo every wash. So this stuff is being phased out. I'm just keeping it there because I feel bad. And then this is the Olaplex Hair Protector. Hair Perfector, although it should be Hair Protector. So this is the number three, which is like their take home uh, kind of like serum. So you actually kind of like wet your hair and put this on before any shampoo or conditioner. It's not a conditioner replacement. It repairs bonds in your hair. So it's really, really good if you have like damaged hair, bleached hair, anything like that. So I put this on, I leave it on for like 10 minutes or so. I'll usually put it on and then like shave my legs or whatever and then I rinse it out I use my shampoo and conditioner like normal uh, my hairdresser said that you don't want to use this every single wash because you can build up too much protein in your hair which can actually uh, do the opposite effect and it can kind of wreck your hair so I use it once every three or four washes as well I'd probably say um, or I'll kind of leave it be until I feel like my hair is like feeling really shitty and then I'll kind of use it. Then over here I have my kind of like cleansers. So I have the Glossier one because I was trying it out. Um, and then I have the Kiehl's uh, oil to foam body cleanser. They're both oil to foam cleansers. Um, I do prefer the Kiehl's one just because I feel like it's very hydrating, but it doesn't leave quite the same kind of like oily residue that this Glossier one does. So I've been really liking that. I love shaving my legs with it. Normally if I shave my legs, I have like the driest skin ever. It's like super ashy and like just fucked up so this kind of helps me with that um, it just leaves my skin feeling really hydrated afterwards sometimes I don't even feel like I need to put on lotion after my shower which is like sacrilege in this house then I have it's raining men from lush uh, this smells like honey it is so lovely and it's Matt's favorite body wash so we keep that in the house I also have rub 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 from lush which is a shower scrub and it's very like fresh smelling um, and I use that sometimes if I feel like I need a little bit more kind of like exfoliation and then we have Jersey bounce which I love this shampoo like it's incredible it gives you such great volume and it makes your hair feel like so unbelievably clean the only thing is that this is like full of salt so it's really hard on my hair when i have like colored hair or whatever but this is better on natural hair in my opinion i try to encourage matt to use it instead of using god's soap aka water so this is the little foreo uh, cleanser guy i talked about in my last video how i'm not a huge fan of physical exfoliation because i feel like it's just so rough on your skin um, but if i do feel like my skin is rough and i need to exfoliate i will use this guy with a little uh, drop of cleanser it's just a lot more kind of like soft it's not as harsh and intense as like um you know like a saint ives apricot scrub or something like that that's so harsh on your skin um so if i do feel like i need to really exfoliate I'll use that guy and then I have just like a regular bar of soap and then back here is the Buffy uh, 
scrub from Lush. So it's like a bar that has like a shit ton of cocoa butter in it, but it also has kind of like scrubby exfoliating things in it, which I'll sometimes use on my legs. This guy can be pretty harsh on your skin, so I like to put on a little bit of like an oil cleanser first, and then um, just kind of like gently scrub over top with this if I need to like really get off some dead skin on like anywhere on my body. Don't ever use anything like this on your face though. And then I have my razor, which I only buy boy razors because girl razors suck. And then I usually keep a couple little face cleansers up here. So I have the Glossier Milky Jelly one because I was trying that out for a review. And then I have the uh, Drunk Elephant jelly cleanser as well which i like but again it's not something that i'm like blown away by i just kind of keep those cleansers there because when i'm in the shower i don't want to like have to jump out and use my everyday cleanser so i just keep those ones up there and then in this drawer i have my hair tools so this is my hair dryer i do have this fancy ass dyson hair dryer is it incredible <sighs> Actually, yes, it is. It's really quiet. It blow dries my hair really fast. I feel like it does significantly less damage to my hair. Is it worth that money? God, a little bit, yeah. It's, it's fucking nice. If you're somebody that actually blow dries your hair every day, I do feel like it's worth the investment. Um, if you're somebody that blow dries your hair once a month, Probs not. Then I have my flat iron. So this is the GHD Platinum Flat Iron. Um, this, ugh, God damn it. I love this straightener but it's like the most unreliable straightener ever. I have had this crap out on me mm, four times. And by crap out on me, I mean like completely stop working to the point where like I need to bring it in and return it and get a new one. What happens is I'll plug it in, this little light where the on switch is will turn red. I'll try restarting it, I'll try unplugging it and plugging it back in. I'll do like the hard button restart and stuff and uh, it doesn't work. It just stops working, it stays red forever and it won't heat up and I have to return it and get a new one. So that's happened four times with like four completely different straighteners so it's obviously just like a problem with this particular uh, straightener or possibly brand I'm not sure it's pretty disappointing I do love the tools that they make but I just find that that straightener is so fucking unreliable that it's pretty disappointing when it's such an expensive brand and then for my curling iron I just picked up this one from t3 so it looks like this and then there's these two uh, wands with it as well that come in the same package so there's one that's a little bit smaller and then one that's kind of like a thin towards the top and thicker towards the bottom I used to have a GHD curling iron as well and I lost it in a hotel somewhere and I couldn't remember which one I'd left it in so I couldn't even like call him to get it back. I really like that curler. I think it was called the Curve. Um, but I just decided to try a new one because I'm mad at GHD. So I tried this one and I've really really liked it so far. I've had this guy for about ugh, probably three months um, and I think it works great. And this is my scale that uh, I step on and then immediately get depressed because somehow I can no longer eat like I did when I was 18 and not gain weight. And I know that you're probably thinking, haha, I'm that person. I can eat whatever I want and not gain weight. Just you weigh, motherfucker. This guy's coming for you. All right, you guys, so that is everything for today. Thank you so much for hanging out and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something cool. Let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below. Always open to them video ideas. All right, you guys, peace out.